Hey everybody, Dave here. Whenever you're working with automating processes in Blue Prism, you're gonna come across the need to work with collections. There's an object called collections that helps you do that. And today we're gonna to talk about the action add row. All right, we're looking at the add row action. So let's grab an action stage from the left side. We'll just drop it on the page, open up our action stage, and we're gonna go ahead and type add row because I know that's what I'm using. If you are just trying to find new actions to learn, maybe you'll go into the business object drop down, and you'll, you'll pick an object and then go choose your action and work on it. But we know that we're gonna go down to the internal business objects group at the bottom, then click on collections, and then we have our add row pre-selected, but if it weren't pre-selected, I'd hit this drop down and I'd choose the action I wanna work with. We're calling the action, so I can click OK. Okay, we've called the action, right? Uh, but we've gotta do a little bit of setup, so let's go and preview the preconditions and the post conditions that are inside of this action reference. There are three tabs. I'm gonna click over to the conditions tab first and uh, look at the preconditions. Now let me stop and say that we're gonna go over these preconditions and post conditions. You're gonna be confused and you'll be saying, what, 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 wait, wait, go back. Just listen to me go over the preconditions and post conditions. And then what we'll do is move over and start creating inputs and outputs. And at that point, we're going to be satisfying these preconditions and I'll explain them more, but I want to give you a preview into it because that's what you should do before you start working with the action. There are three conditions here. The collection stage must exist. Okay. So maybe we're not sure what collection stage this is referring to, but I could probably make an assumption that since we're adding rows to a collection that somewhere we'll need to create one. Okay, so when we do that, it needs to exist. The next precondition is the collection stage must be within the scope of the action stage. That means that either your collection has to be on the same page, or if it's on another page, you have to make sure you share it with other pages. And I can show you that checkbox in just a second. The third precondition is must not be a single row collection. This might be a little bit unintuitive. It might sound like this is saying, hey, my collection can't have only one row, but that's not what it means. And I'll show you that also in just a second. The post condition is that the collection will have an additional empty row on top of whatever it has already. And then that will also be the current row, meaning that that row will be selected. And that's gonna be important later on for when we wanna add data into that row. Let's click okay and we're gonna go and try to satisfy these preconditions. Let's create our input of a collection. We're not sure yet how we'll reference it, but we know we're gonna need a collection at some point. So let's go ahead and do that. We'll call this collection in. And then just for funsies, I'm gonna add a field to it and I'll choose a data type of text You'll see that there's no initial values and I'm gonna go ahead and leave this blank. If you look down at the bottom, you'll see that there are three options that you can choose. The first one is out of the scope of this video, but it's, it's pretty intuitive. Every time this page runs, it'll reset to its initial value. The second one says hide from other pages in the process. This is what we're talking about when it says, make sure that the collection stage is in the scope of the action stage. So either it has to be on the same page or you have to uncheck this box. That means that the action stage can reach out into other pages in the same object or process. Okay, the third one is single row. This is where I was saying that you wanna make sure this is unchecked because the precondition for this action stage is this cannot be a single row collection. Reason being, if I select this, that means, as you see, it just popped up, there will always be one row, there can never be zero rows, there can never be two or more. Not being able to add rows will conflict with my action of add row. I'm gonna uncheck that. I'm gonna recheck hide from other pages because we're gonna put our collection stage on the same page. And we will remove this row, click okay. Now we have uh, previewed the pre preconditions and post conditions. We've also set up the input, we think, but let's go ahead and actually configure the action stage to use that input. So you have the tab here that's auto selected when you open the action stage and there's only one input it says collection name and a data type of text. So my initial gut reaction is okay, well let's just go to the right side and I have a list of data items and collections that I can use for my inputs. So I'll just drag my collection and input in here. Oh, I've got an error, oh no. 
So what this is saying is that the data type doesn't match what the input is asking for. The reason being is that what I just did by passing the words collection in with square brackets around it, what I did is I'm actually passing the data from inside the collection to the action stage. But the action stage is not asking for that. It's asking for the name of the collection because that action, whenever the object runs, it'll actually go reach out and grab that collection for itself because it has access to it. Sometimes the input will ask you for the actual data of the collection and sometimes it'll ask you for just the name. And the way to know whether it's one or the other is right here when it asks for the input, if it's a data type of text, it asks, it's asking for the name. If it's a data type of collection, then it wants the square brackets to have the actual collection. So what I frequently do is I'll drop that on the page, I'll get the error, and then I'll just change the square brackets to quotation marks, which is what you gotta have around a value inside of an expression field. Okay, let's now look at our outputs. Don't have any outputs because we're gonna be interacting or operating on a collection itself. And then our next step after setting up the inputs and outputs is to go verify that we have met the requirements of the preconditions and the post conditions. So we have a collection stage. It is on the same page, so it's in the scope of the action stage. And we made sure that we did not check the box that says single row collection. And then this is not actually a condition, more of a result. So afterward, we should verify that there is an, a new empty row and that row is selected. Let's click OK. Our next step is to, to link the stages in. I'm going to hit F3 and then click on the start stage and drag to the next stage. Click on the add row, drag to the end stage. I'm going to hit F2 so I have the pointer again. And then our next step is just to run it. So I'm going to hit this go button on the top left. All right, so you can see what changed is that now it says row one of one. I'll just change the size of the text so it's a little easier to see. And uh, I'm gonna go inside of it and just verify that, see our initial values are that there are no rows and now we actually have one row that is empty and it's ready for me to populate data into it. I'll show you really quick how you would put data in. We'll drop a calculation stage on the page I'm going to type the word Dave in here. Remember to put quotation marks because this is a, an expression field. And then I'm going to store the result into this collection. And you'll see that blue prism is pretty handy here on the right side. It actually gives me the name of the field as well. So I can actually type this myself if I want, but it's easy enough just to grab this over here. You'll see it uses dot operation to reference the collection itself and dot and then the field name, which is field one. So I'm going to drag that over into store result in. And then uh, what I can do is just go run this after I connect it in. So I'm going to link using F3. And then let's reset and run. So it added our row. We had it selected. And then we ran the calculation stage. Let's go verify that our data went into the field. There we go. So we have Dave in that field uh, because we had the row selected. And remember, once you've added a new row, at least while you're still on that page, that new row is also selected. Thanks for joining me to look at the action add row. I'm going to be coming out with a lot more content and eventually I'll have one video for every single action in Blue Prism.